Well, let's go to section four, RO stage one. So you'll see that we actually break these out. Uh, tell us about it. Uh, note that some stages are not filters, but rather treatments to finish or polish the finished or produced water. Purification and distilled have different meanings altogether. Disregard some specifications like microns in these situations, if not available by marking as unknown in the section below. So uh, here we are at stage one. This is where the in influent water comes in to the reverse osmosage. And it's typically going to be a sediment filter. And this is a Neopure brand, which is probably the actual name of my water treatment system is for the reverse osmosis. But um, there you go. Uh, if so let's say that you bought this in the last year and maybe it's only six months old so if you've never replaced the cartridge or treatment in in a particular stage just use the install date that you did above okay so I know that I've serviced mine we'll just say March 17th we'll leave it on the 9th don't hit today <laughs> and we probably I was hoping I could just copy that, but you may want to just write down that date um, on a little post-it note next to you as you fill this out. Okay, the uh, cartridge type, typically it's going to be a pre-filter or sediment filter. It gets all the grit and silt and things like that out. What is the capacity for the cartridge life in gallon? Pick the closest number, if not exact. So a lot of times you can pull out the cartridge. When you purchase the cartridge, you might want to photo document it by taking pictures of the cartridge so that you know. And feel free to mark up the cartridge housing on the outside of it, like stage one. And you can write, you know, sediment or SED or something like that. Mark it up. Make it look like, you know, so feel free to take a, what what's known as a Sharpie pen or the, its equivalent. Get a fine point. Uh, typically on the ones that I choose, they're going to be 10,000 gallons. And that's the life of the cartridge. And this is very important because if you track your usage in gallons, if you have monitoring equipment, either in your place of business or at home, this is one of the things I teach is if, if you had a failed stage three in your reverse osmosis and you see that you've gone over 10,000 gallons, your stage one is done. You have to replace that cartridge. Your stage three is done because it has broken the, the interior workings. It's very fragile. I don't know that it's made of glass per se, but if you drop a, a membrane, which is the reverse osmosis stage three typically, you pretty much got to replace it because what will happen is water will come in and it'll hit that broken piece and it'll be like your bypass valve and just shove all that water straight down your drain. So walking by the kitchen and it's been hours and you keep hearing water. Now, I know this isn't very eloquent, but peeing out into the drain, if it sounds like that and hasn't stopped, you are wasting water. You are going to have a huge water bill and you need to address that right away which is another reason why i recommend that you always have backups of each one of these stages they're not that expensive to shelf they don't have an expiration date until you put them into use so it's always good to have them because especially during a pandemic event where manufacturers might be backed up like the toilet and purell uh, manufacturers of toilet paper i should say and purell hand sanitizers were where it's like uh, weeks, months. I still to this day, it's been 13 months since the official pandemic in the United States. I still have not seen a Purell brand hand sanitizer. I think they all just marked everything up uh, higher than gold and platinum and silver and uh, went to the beach. All right. I digress. What is the capacity for the cartridge in in terms of life and months. So pick the closest number. Typically that's gonna be a year, even though it says 10,000 gallons. What is the micron rating? And this is what microns looks like. Just like a dollar sign looks like a dollar sign. This is microns, which is like a upside down WRL. <laughs> that's how I see it. Uh, pick the closest number, if not exact. And then this kind of is a cool general guideline for water filtration in terms of microns. So 
Uh, remember, we were talking about the silt, the grit, and the sand. That's where the rough filter is. And you can see that it's saying 50 to 1,000 a, a microns, right? So if you get a big chunk of hair or something that, that came up out of nowhere, or it's a fish, <laughs> it's going to be 1,000 plus micron, right? Um, but then you, you can get into these filters. This is typically the dimension on... Uh, the RO system, which is considered point of use. But if you have a whole house water filtration, this is the size that's going to be in dimension. So 20 inches rather than 10, and it's four and a half inches diameter versus two and a half inches. This one's going to last much longer. The cool thing is these are priced pretty comparable to the small ones and have much more life. Plus, you know, you can get these in increments of 50 microns, 25 microns, 20 microns, all the way down to uh, five, right? So this is just a reference point so that you can see. And it also shows you where it starts to remove why you have all these key players and stages and what their role is. This is not one of those things where you want to play Russian roulette with your stages. For example, if you did not have this ability to remove chlorine or chloramine and your volatile organic compounds, it would absolutely kill your reverse osmosis membrane. So it's important imperative that this is done. If you've gone for years without changing this, you are killing the life out of this. If you do a, a super chlorination or shock treatment to the entire interior uh, water lines because you have an ultraviolet system that kills off germs and parasites, well it's only going to be able to do that if you shock everything uh, every year or every two years first you must take offline the reverse osmosis system. That's why you want to have a bypass uh, under the sink so that that water just goes through the interior pipes and not into your system. There are ways to take care of your system, to sanitize it if you wish. We could talk about that another day. It, it's a bear. Well, I'll tell you that right now. I would rather just continue to change out the cartridges a uh, little FYI for you shows you if you slice something in half, the cross diameter in microns, this is where these kind of things fall in. This is kind of interesting that they put fog all the way out here um, when actually vapor in the shower uh, that comes out, it's not steam, it's vapor, is actually right in this neighbor here, this neighborhood here. Uh, you can see smoke, particulate, yeah, very small, just hangs there. And then, of course, viruses. This is why the coronavirus, in its fourth mutation so far as a, a variant, is so pervasive uh, because it just can hang in the air, aerosolize, which is why I absolutely wear a mask everywhere because I don't know who was in that enclosed a stairwell or enclosed elevator they could have been in there an hour ago coughing up a storm and it just hangs there if especially if there's no air movement to exhaust that air out and you can say that the doors open and, and shut and yeah there's a degree of that but this might be one of those things that's so light in oxygen that it just kind of hangs in the air and doesn't spill out like water would okay some thoughts for you. All right, so if there's a rating on your cartridge, then you want to put it here. If you don't, you're just going to mark unknown. I'm going to say that it is probably above 50 microns. What is flow rate, the cartridge in gallons per minute? Pick the closest. So this is important because especially if you have low flow or, or no flow, you got to know what the flow rate is. And if you have something like that, you're typically going to be at the higher spectrum of gallons per minute. So like 10 gallons per minute or whatever. I know, for example, the flow rate in my home is about seven gallons per minute when it's under all of the, the systems. That's, that's where I end up being. But if I had nothing, I'm closer to 
10 gallons per minute. And a lot of that is taken into account the pressure as well as the, the inside diameter and how many bends and turns there are in my piping, right? So just like a car can't, as Tiger Woods has, has painfully demonstrated, uh, a car needs to slow down when it gets to negotiating a turn. And if you have a bunch of 90 degree turns, uh, that water's gonna slow down. It has to. So the less bends and turns you have in it, the better, and, and that's a, a plug for those folks that have pecs in their home because there really isn't. You can, you can just kind of bend that pipe around and make it flex, uh, just like the tubing of the reverse osmosis system. All right, what is the minimum pressure rating? you got to pick up one of these. I think they're about $14, $15 at Home Depot or any other hardware store. That might be a little pricier for the smaller hardware stores because they don't have the volume and pricing. Or you can just pick one up off of like Amazon or uh, eBay, something like that. Go to your trusted sources and pick one up. This one's cool. It's plastic. It does what I need to do. Watts is a major brand, so think like brand name of your car. Uh, Watts is like a brand name to plumbing fixtures and gauges. Uh, in fact, that first picture I showed you of where you can turn off the water to the main, the very next thing after that bypass valve is the pressure regulator, which is made by Watts. So here we are at, at a hose bib on the outside of the home, which is because this is threaded at three quarter inch female pipe thread, so FPT. You don't have to get Teflon tape and seal it and all that. It's, it's quick. You just hook it up and you make sure nobody else is flushing toilets, washing hands and that kind of thing. And then you open up the spigot here uh, on this and you get your reading. And it's got this red line where you can kind of use it for memory. And then if you needed to make some adjustments, believe it or not, I had to make an adjustment. I was closer to 40 PSIs on my house. I changed out the pressure regulator and I thought the pressure was fine. Uh, so I didn't make any adjustments to it. And this is a special call out where you can learn from other people's mistakes. There is a locking nut on the pressure regulator and it wasn't seated up to the adjustable uh, pressure screw or or nut and uh, so it allowed vibration over time for that thing to spin down and open up or close if you will the uh, pressure so i was at 40 psi this is me halfway through the the job of trying to maximize my pressure because you need to have good house pressure to begin with otherwise the rest of the stuff that you have in the way of water treatment is going to knock down the flow rate and the pressure and this is the minimum rating and you may end up having minimum and maximum being the same and if that's the case fine so it's kind of like if you don't have anything online other than the water feeding the water heater and going to every water related device in in the home the appliances uh, washer the steam dryer the dishwasher, toilets, faucets in every room, kitchen and bathroom. Maybe you have uh, a wet sauna uh, that has a steam function. Maybe you have a hot tub that's connected. Maybe you have a pool situation. So just pick them. So I'm going to take this. This says it's almost 60. So round up or down as needed. We'll say 60. It's closer to that than 65 or 70. And then the maximum pressure rating. And actually, what we're saying here, to be clear, uh, this is the rating that is on the actual stage one cartridge. So it still may say, it may say 40, uh, it may say 60. We'll go with 60, and then the maximum is, you know, we're gonna say 100 PSI, which is uh, pounds per square inch. So that's the rating for the stage one cartridge, which is sediment, all right. Then the next thing we need to know is what's the minimum water temperature? Now, you don't need to spend the bucks that I spent on this pH meter, but it just happens to include the temperature because like TDS, temperature matters. It, it actually 
can work with or against a reading. That's why you don't want to just take your pool test kit to, to get a pH reading because if your pool temperature is 20 degrees off where it's supposed to be, you're going to end up adjusting your shock incorrectly and that's not good for people in the pool if it's too hot chemically. It showed 85.8. For me, that, that's kind of high, even for Colorado, but it was summer, and also I have a recirculating hot water line connected to under my sink. So it's taking that warm water, like if you want to wash your hands in warm water, it doesn't need to be scalding hot, it doesn't, but you certainly don't want it to be 40 degrees icy cold either. All year round, it's, it's a little more comfortable, especially when it's the heat source is downstairs 25, 30 feet away and pipe run. You know, you would have to run the water for like two minutes, which would be absolutely wasteful. So this way, it's automatically recirculating. The temperature doesn't bother the treatment system. If anything, it actually helps that it's actually a little warmer. It makes the reverse osmosis system run far more efficient. But you don't want it so high that you know, you're creating a situation where uh, bacteria can thrive. What we're concerned with is just the minimum water temperature rating on the actual cartridge for stage one. We'll say that it's 40 degrees. And what's the maximum? We'll say it's 100. Okay? Then you go next. So this was a, a long explanation about picking this first stage cartridge. Now that you see the questions that we're asking, then you're going to see some familiarity. And now. A brief message from our sponsor at dailylivingwithwater.com. Hello, I'm Mike Rogers. If you like this video and want some help troubleshooting your water treatment system to get back to the best water flowing inside of your home and business, I've got good news for you. I've developed two remote troubleshooting support plans that you're absolutely going to love. Nobody else in the water treatment industry offers this valuable and exclusive service. This is a game changer the water treatment industry has never seen before. These per session plans are called standard remote support by email and priority remote support call. These per incident support troubleshooting sessions are offered remotely by email or through a video conference call, which is designed for more urgent situations. Whether you have a reverse osmosis or whole house water filtration, or UV disinfection system, or all of the above and more, I've got you covered. Whether you're on city water, groundwater well, or aquifer well, or a cistern water supply, you now have a friend in the water treatment system industry for education, support, and real world solutions that won't break the bank. Both support plans are designed with you, the do-it-yourselfer in mind, to guide you through the steps combined with my input having over three decades of experience in water treatment. Between you and I together, we can help you get your water treatment system back online fast and at a reasonable price. My global award-winning technical support experience of over two decades takes the complex and breaks it down patiently into a proven and simple step-by-step -step process. After you have solved the issue with my direction and your input and your hands, you'll be able to be the hero who protected everyone's water source under your roof. But I can't help you if you don't hire me. Just click the support link and order your remote support troubleshooting session with me right now. You'll be glad you did. In fact, the email support plan starts at just $99. Our 100% secure automated online ordering system is standing by 24-7, 365. Also, if you're thinking about designing a water treatment system for the first time or thinking about upgrading your current water treatment system project for home or office, or you just need an independent second opinion on your water test diagnosis, because there is no one-size-fits-all water treatment solution, I offer both independent water treatment design consultations and treatment plans that are customized to fit your specific home or business needs. Click on our Learn More link 
to see my digital learning products, training, services, and support specifically designed for the first time ever to empower the do-it-yourselfer. I've written books on the subject of water that are only available at dailylivingwithwater.com with more publications coming soon. All offerings by dailylivingwithwater.com are exclusively designed for do-it-yourselfers, homeowners, renters, and business owners seeking affordable solutions to safe and effective water treatment for everyday use. It's a scary world out there with water issues in the headlines, which seems like nearly every week. Get peace of mind right now. Click those links to protect your home and your business water supply today. My name is Michael W. Rogers with DailyLivingWithWater.com, and I approve this message.